This video is brought to you by catbeast.com. Design your own custom snapbacks and hats. Hey, what's good everybody? It's CJ Beats. We're back at it again today. Today we're going to discuss the issue of uh, the CPU overload in Logic Pro X. Some of my subscribers, you know, told me, hey, CJ, I, I get this uh, CPU overload when I'm trying to work on some projects. You know, these projects might have a lot of virtual instruments, uh, you know, and effect plugins, and uh, they're just overloading their, their computer and uh, they're unable to, to work, um, which really sucks because, you know, you want to make sure your workflow is as smooth as possible. So, you know, there are a few things that you could do uh, to make Logic perform better. And uh, the first and foremost thing is to quit any other applications uh, before using Logic. So depending on your CPU and your RAM, you'd want to go ahead and close out any other applications that might be using up uh, CPU and RAM uh, so that the only application you have open is Logic Pro X. When you're looking at your um, your bar below or wherever you have it set, if there's a, uh, a black dot underneath one of them, that means that they are open and running. So, you know, let's say you have Chrome open and, uh, you know, you, you want to make sure to quit that. So if you hit Chrome and uh, it's still running in the background, what you got to do is make sure to uh, quit Google Chrome. That will actually close the application completely. If you just hit this X on an application on Macs, they don't really close out, right? You still have that dot underneath. So first and foremost, go up to Chrome and then quit Google Chrome. And this goes for any application that you might have open. You can always check to see what your computer has in terms of uh, CPU and RAM by clicking on the Apple button, clicking about this Mac. All your specs will be listed right here. So my processor is a 3.5 gigahertz, six core Intel Xeon uh, E5 and I have 32 gigs of RAM. The computer I'm working with is a Mac Pro and uh, you know, it's pretty souped up, but um, you, know, you don't have to have these types of uh, specs in order to use Logic. Some of you might have an i5, even an i3 processor, uh, and then you know, maybe eight gigs of RAM. I really think like the threshold in terms of working for in music production or in Logic, uh, you have to have at least like eight gigs of RAM, an i5 processor or higher. Uh, you know, if you were using an i3 uh, with like four gigs of RAM, it's going to be tough to create music with that because music production is very CPU and RAM intensive, you know, so you want to make sure that your computer is up to par. So right off the bat, you know, you, you might want to think about um, upgrading your Mac or even, you know, maybe upgrading your RAM. Uh, there are ways to do that. Uh, you know, you could speak to an Apple specialist or a friend of yours that might be into computers or something. The next thing you, uh, you'd want to do uh, is save projects that have high track counts. That means a lot of tracks like this. This beat that I had here only has a total of six tracks. Uh, but, you know, if, if they have, let's say they have 10 or 20 tracks, you want to make sure to uh, save those projects on an external hard drive, uh, preferably a solid state drive versus an HDD, uh, you know, that has either a USB 3 or Thunderbolt connection for faster transfer speeds. Uh, versus then saving all your projects directly on your Mac hard drive. Try to separate out uh, projects and, and, and other stuff saved onto an external hard drive uh, versus your, your Mac drive. And if you have an external hard drive, a good thing to know is that you should always format those drives in macOS extended journaled format. Let's talk about monitoring your system performance. Um, up here, you know, this is the usual look for um, the parameters of your project. You could go ahead and click on this display mode and then hit custom. And that's going to give you some more indicators here. For example, the CPU and the HD. So this basically is a meter showing you how much CPU and how much hard drive is being used up by Logic. So if you uh, double click on this, it's going to bring up your uh, CPU and uh, hard drive indicators. And I'm just going to play back this beat right now. We'll take a look and see what happens here.
So you can see that this project is pretty CPU intensive, even though it doesn't have a lot of um, it doesn't have a lot of tracks. However, I am using a lot of effect plugins, so that is using up my CPU. Each individual bar represents uh, the cores of your uh, of your CPU. So you know, if you have an eight core. Uh, six core or whatever this will represent how many cores you have and how many cores are being used uh, by logic so right now with this project it looks like about half of my cores are being uh, utilized uh, with all the plugins and uh, effect plugins that I have loaded onto this project if you get the CPU overload uh, error in logic Pro X you will notice that all of these cores as well as the main indicator here will be completely saturated there'll be a point where you know the cpu uh, overload message comes up and logic stops here are some more things that you could do to prevent that from happening okay so if you don't have a computer that's all souped up uh it, it is okay because you can you could still set logic up to work with what you got so one of the things that you could do uh, is increasing your IO buffer size. And increasing the IO buffer size uh, will allow the computer or the CPU uh, to basically have more time to process stuff. You can change those parameters by clicking on Logic Pro X Preferences, and then let's hit uh, General. If you come over to Audio, you have an IO buffer size indicator right here. So mine's set to 128, uh, which results in a latency of 5.8 milliseconds. So it's important to know that if you are increasing your I.O. buffer size, you're also increasing your latency. If I hit play uh, in the Logic Pro X session, it'll take 11.6 milliseconds uh, for that output to, uh, to come out. So if I increase the buffer size, I'm giving my CPU uh, you know, more time basically to process this audio. However, the, the resulting latency is 11.6 milliseconds round trip. So it's uh, 5.8 milliseconds for the output. So that the more you increase this buffer size, the longer it will take uh, for that sound to be processed and put out into your headphones, into your monitors, whatever you're using. So you have to find a happy medium for your computer. Uh, if you can work in 128, that's great because the uh, latency is really not that noticeable. But the more you increase uh, the I.O. buffer size, it will uh, you know, take longer for that sound to, be, uh, to, to come out. So I hope the information I gave to you today, uh, you know, let you overcome the CPU overload uh, message that you're getting in Logic Pro X. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to drop a comment in the comments section. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to be notified anytime I upload some new content. My name is CJ Beats, and I'm out for now. Peace.